Ow! Ow! Help. Only a little bit. There you go. Ready? Yes. <laughs> New waterways day. New canal day. New river day. New river day. New we... book day. <laughs> New navigation book day. <laughs> New life day. <laughs> We've really moved on since we left Crick three weeks ago. So we're now at the uh, conflagration of the. Ooh. Trent River Trent and the River Saw. We've come round the corner off the River Saw from Leicester and uh, moored up here on the Cranfleet. Is it cut? Trent? The Cranfleet, Cranfleet cut. cut. Here. Uh, just before we head onto the Trent River proper below us. We've been down and had a look and it's wide, but even as you approach that junction, train, <laughs> even as you approach the junction behind us, suddenly it's wide water. And um, it's stunning and it's exciting and it's a little bit scary as well, isn't it? It is. It's, uh, we're, we're really excited but a bit nervous at the same time because a lot of what we've got to do on the Trent uh, River Trent is tidal. Yeah. So we've got about 80-something miles of uh, River Trent to do. Plus we're going down to Lincoln on the Foss Way, I think, or the Foss Dyke Canal, and then down to Boston also the Chesterfield Canal, so we've got a few hundred miles of brand new cruising to do. And it's very different to what we've done before. Obviously we did the Mersey, but we had a pilot to take us across the Mersey. We're on our own with this. I think all the big locks are manned, but we've got to get the anchor out. We've got to tie extra <coughs> rope onto the anchor. And make the ropes longer, yeah. We've dug the life jackets out to check them over, make sure everything is fine. And I think we're going to get some life jackets with handles for the dogs, because looking at other people's videos, the moorings are up really high above the boat and we're going to have to somehow get the dogs up maybe on the roof, <laughs> on the top, I don't know. But um, it's a bit scary, a bit it's, scary. It's going to be fab, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so today we're cruising about five miles just to the edge of Nottingham to a little part of Nottingham called Beeston. I'm going to sit there for a couple of days, have a walk around, see what's happening, see what uh, there is locally and uh, look forward to just seeing something new. Yeah. It's been so long, two years we've been in and out of Middlewich. The last time we were on a new navigation was um, when we went to Liverpool with the foxes, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And the River Weaver, yeah. so we're so excited yeah. to get onto new waters. And it makes, it makes it, we haven't done a video for a few weeks now because we just wanted to not just do the same old canals that we've been on. And we, we just really want to start again with new stuff and we're going to try and do a little bit of history. You've bought yourself a present. We've bought you a present. Yeah, I got a new bike. I really missed my cycling since I got rid of my last bike um, when we got this boat. So we decided it doesn't matter. We can stick it on the back and tie it up here, chain it when um, we're not using it. And when we're cruising, I'll we'll just put it in the bow at the front. But I'm really looking forward to it. So I've had a couple of rides, haven't I? And uh, You have, yeah. It's been fab. It's really great. So I'm and looking thing, forward to the that. The thing about living on a boat is that everything has to be a compromise. You can't, nothing is just easy to cope with. My weaving loom takes up a corner of the boat that we could use for a nice table and lamp or whatever. And if the bike has to sit here and we've got to walk around it, it's no big so deal, is big, it? Yeah. And it just means when we're cruising, we've got to take a little bit longer to prepare to go. But we've got all the time in the world. It's a full size mountain bike, 27 and a half inch wheels. I didn't buy a folding bike because the tow paths can be really bouncy and uh, knobbly and gnarly. So I didn't think a folding bike would cope with a lot of that. So I thought proper mountain bike. And I'm a big bloke, and I don't think I'd look pretty good on a folding bike anyway, being vain. <laughs> oh, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, let's go. Matey boy in front of us has put his engine on just as we press the record button. But uh, a, a boat has just gone past, so hopefully that lock, lock will be, be still full, ready for us. So well, We've got to fill it with water first, so let's get going. Off we go. This has been our entertainment for the last couple of days while we've been moored here. This moorhen has chosen this sunken barge with a tyre in it to make her nest and they've got the babies chirping around in there and all we keep hearing is cheap, cheap, cheap splosh as mum or dad jump off the side of the boat, go and get some food and then have to walk the whole length of the boat to get back on with their food. 
hours of endless entertainment. Not only is it New Waterways Day, but it's New Waterways Book. Look at this, a new navigational guide. Book number six, Nottingham, York and the North East. And you compare that to the one we've just finished using. It's all dog-eared, it's been rained on. It's gonna be a real pleasure to use this nice shiny new one. taste of the River Trent, the mighty River Trent. So it's just about four miles is it on this little stretch four, to Beeston? Five. I think. Yeah. Already we've got signs of weirs and keep on this side and you have to keep your wits about you don't you? You do. So we were filling up with water for quite a long time with such a dribble and another boat after about three quarters of an hour a little boat came up so we decided to go through the lock with them and we'll also go through the lock with them on the other end. At Beeston. And in the meantime, dinner's cooked in the slow cooker. Chili. So, chili tonight. Chili yeah. sin carne. Chili sin carne. <laughs> so that was the car and the river proper. We are joining now and it's big. You might have already spotted the lovely addition to our boat, the wonderful Buckby can with our name painted on it. Laura Maisie, by the wonderful Kay's Canal Craft. Yeah, we moored up near her at uh, Foxall Locks. Foxton Locks. Foxton, Foxton, Foxton. We're Foxton, out of practice, Locks. folks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just couldn't resist. So that was a, a post crick treat. Yeah. What do you think so far, Fran? It's lovely. It's, a, it's a, already we've seen um, about three uh, egrets. I've seen cormorants fishing. Oyster catcher. I think I saw an oyster catcher fly past. Um, so already, within 15 minutes of being on the river, it's so different. It's beautiful though, isn't it? And some fabulous little riverside lodges um, up on quite big stilts, probably 20 foot high. Um, mooring poles, would you call them, for flood conditions? So obviously floods quite high this river, but at the moment it's the lowest that people have seen it for a long, long while. The water yeah. is really low, so our only worry is um, avoiding obstacles on the edges at the moment. We haven't had that much rain, have we, in the last couple of months no. or so? So we've been no. lucky. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will stay like this until we get off the tidal trend. <laughs> <laughs> You've said it now. Just over there is the Attenborough Nature Reserve, which um, is old quarries, old gravel quarries filled with water. And they're a haven now for wildlife and uh, waterfowl, etc. So we're going to go and have a walk later this afternoon. But it's just a shame there aren't any mooring pontoons just on the side here that you could moor up for an hour or two and just walk from here rather than go to Beeston, where we have to be anyway. The guidebook does suggest that, that if the country park people had their wits about them, they would put a landing stage for us. And it's called the Attenborough Nature Reserve. Nothing to do with David Attenborough. It's because the local village or town is Attenborough, but David Attenborough did open it, didn't he? Yes. Which is very apt. In the 60s. So we're going to have a look later, see what that's all about. 
I was really enjoying this. It's uh, so different, isn't it, to what we've yeah. been having lately. Yeah. The River Saw was absolutely gorgeous coming out of, especially coming out of Loughborough and around that area. It's absolutely stunning, really beautiful, but it's half this width. And I understand the trend's going to get even wider as we get further along it. It is, yeah. Wider and faster. Yes. So that's the first part of our journey done. No mishaps, uneventful. Beautiful little journey. We've come through Beeston Lock here. And the first thing we've done is pulled up on the water point because the water point at Cranfleet cutting where we stayed just was bloody awful. <laughs> it's just a trickle. So we're topping the tank up here and then we'll go and find somewhere to moor. Wetland Nature Reserve, just west of um, Nottingham. And it's wonderful. It's old gravel pits that have been filled in with water and uh, managed for wildlife. And uh, really enjoying a nice little walk. And we had the added bonus about halfway around the park. We just wandered. We haven't got no route planned. We're just wandering. Wandered around one little bit and heard the sound of cricket balls in the distance. <laughs> so we stopped and had a cup of coffee at Attenborough Cricket Club, watching them play weekend cricket. How, yeah. And the church bell started ringing in the background. Yeah. How very English. English it was indeed. Yeah. But it's, um, it has got a lovely feel about it. There's quite a lot of bird life around. We're looking desperately for otters. We've seen mussel shells around. Um, it just doesn't have the feel of ancient woodland, does it? Well, or oh, natural no, river? It, it is man-made, but having yeah. said that, it's a fantastic um, reserve, if you like, for wildlife. I mean, yeah. it's supposed to be so many otters here. It's a great place to come and see kingfishers. There's so much wild fowl about. Egrets and yeah. um, herons. And it's yeah, been it's lovely. Wonderful. It's a yeah. great walk and a bit, bit blustery today. We've had a shower that stopped the cricket. But uh, we're enjoying ourselves and there's a bird hide 
up here. Yeah. We're going to go up and have a look, see have a what sit, we can see. A sit for five minutes, and guess who came out with our specs today? Yeah. So this is going to be the one day that we do, you're going to see an otter in the distance and I won't be able to see it, but hey ho. Dogs aren't impressed, they have to be on the lead around here, <coughs> oh. so uh, that's what Jess thinks about it. There you go. Stop play. A bit of blue sky coming over there. Sorry, dogs, you can't come. Only assistance dogs. Daddy's going to look for otters. <laughs> I saw six otters. Did you? Yeah. Three flamingos and an alligator. We keep getting a waft of a lovely scent as it blows in the wind and I've worked out that it's this plant which is ladies bed straw. Its proper name is Gallium verum. Really strongly scented and they used to pick it back in medieval times to make mattresses for ladies or for anybody but particularly for women in labour um, because it was supposed to help with giving childbirth. So they used to add it to a straw mattress? They used to add it to a straw mattress because it's really lovely scent anyway. Um, and it's also uh, used, it's got, oh, I can't think of the name of the property in it, but it curdles milk. So it's a rennet, rennet substitute. Yeah. Um, and it is what gives double Gloucester cheese its yellow colour, if you want to use it. I don't think it's used anymore. Um, and it also can be used as a dye. So I have got still some undyed sheep's wool. I just need to see if I need anything else, and if I don't, I might pick some and try dyeing the sheep's wool what I've got with that I've got. But I won't do that until I know that I've got everything else. I wouldn't pick it unless I know I can use it. But really lovely scent. So we've spent three or four days in Beeston. Not sure, actually, if we were supposed to be there for just 48 hours. But it's a bit the, ambiguous. It was ambiguous. Because the mooring sign for two days suddenly stopped. There was no end to it. And we'd moored quite a long way along. And there were boats that have been there. They've got tickets on that have been there for, looks like, years. years. <laughs> so we, we took advantage it, of the ambiguity. We thought three days, no one's going to um, lock us up for having an extra day if it wasn't allowed. But it was weird. So. Yeah, it was nice and quiet and we enjoyed it yeah. there. So now we're heading into Nottingham, um, don't know where to moor up, we don't know, we've had a look at the map, but uh, we'll sort it out when we get there. Uh, it looks really interesting, Nottingham looks like it's got so much to see and do. And once again, we don't know at this point how long the moorings are for, whether you, it's only 24 hours or two days. So we might have to pack everything in. We could get buses and trains back in if we want to do more, yeah, can't we? Yeah, we can do. Um, but you know what we're like, like two days in the city, <laughs> and we'll be um, wanting to get our toes in fresh grass again. So <laughs> who knows what we're going to do? So we hope you've enjoyed this little episode. We'll catch up with us next week when we'll show you around Nottingham. Yep. See you soon.
time. Thanks a lot. Take care.